Let's take a look at how to use the Glueware platform, including Network RPA, to help with regulatory compliance and security. Tim Silverline, Vice President for Security at Glueware, joins us to chat about how to do this, including showing off a real-world automated workflow that mitigates a detected security risk and makes sure that the network is still at desired state. And Tim, we're not talking just about Network RPA, but about several tools within Glueware that can help us with security and compliance, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, so while um, Glueware is not a pure play security product today, we do have a lot of exciting features coming out in the future uh, specifically focused on that. But we do have a bunch of features uh, in our application suite that help customers get a handle on compliance and security inside of their environment. So I'd like to run through our application suite and really identify where we can help from a security perspective. Um, so the first area that we really help customers uh, from a security perspective is obtaining visibility into their environment. Um, right, And so as any security practitioner knows, visibility is crucial to understanding your security posture. If you don't know what's inside of your environment, you're not going to be able to secure it and you're not going to understand what risks might be there. Um, so we have three specific applications that help to uh, obtain visibility. The first one is our dashboard, which really allows uh, customers to create uh, customized widgets and graphs and, and reports that allow them to show quickly or uh, quickly identify um, the information inside of their environment in, the, in a way that makes most sense to the business. Um, next is our data explorer, which really takes the, the same sort of data and lets customers drill into it at a very detailed level and understand um, you know, really detailed information about what's happening inside of that environment and, and all the data that's inside of the Glueware engine. Um, Device Manager is our application that allows customers to discover their network and make sure that they're covering uh, everything inside of the network and making sure that that all of the devices are are, um, are, are, cr are properly inventoried and accounted for. Another thing that Device Manager does is uh, it has the capability of integrating with vulnerability databases, specifically the Cisco PCERT database, as well as the NIST NVD database. And that allows customers to quickly understand whether they're running vulnerable versions of code inside of their environment and research those vulnerabilities to understand if those are things that they need to be concerned about and should be making plans to upgrade to make sure that they're not vulnerable any longer. Okay, so Tim, this first part here, again, this is visibility. All of these tools within the Glueware suite help me know what I've got out there so that I can uh, figure out what the, what the things are that I should be targeting and get those things remediated as, uh, as soon as possible. Yep, definitely. Um, that, that's, again, visibility is key to security. And so all of these applications really help you to understand what's on your network, what code you're running, um, if you're running different versions of code, and really, really give you that good understanding of everything inside of your network. No one's running different versions of code, Tim. Come on, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, some of our customers have tens of thousands of devices and managing firmware versions across that many devices is extremely challenging. So um, I would say we, we've had we've had multiple examples where we've gone into cu customers in, in POC environments, and when doing that, we you know are told that they think they're only running let's say five versions of code, ac code across their network, and by the time they're done, we identify maybe tens or even hundreds of different versions of code that they were totally unaware of. All right, Tim. So if I know now what I've got out there, what's the next set of components within Glueware that are going to help me get the problem resolved? Yep. So the next suite of applications um, really helps to identify or it really helps customers to assess their network and comply to, their, and comply to different uh, standards. So Config Drift, um, you know, that, that allows customers just to know of things that are changing inside of their environment quickly. If somebody made a manual change or you know, somebody, you know, maybe a hacker trying to move laterally inside of the network made a change, it allows customers to identify that really quickly. Um, but the config audit takes that to a next level where you can actually compare your configurations either against your corporate standards, against regulatory standards such as PCI and HIPAA, um, or even, even against industry benchmarks such as like CIS standards. Um, and so you can get a really quick understanding of whether or not you're compliant to these and the ability to customize these is very is very unique and, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. So maybe you're in an industry that has a, a benchmark or a standard that's, that's really unique to your industry. Within our platform, you can customize the checks to make it very specific and be able to, to cover that, you know, cover that unique challenge or that unique standard that you need to uh, uh, comply to. And just to, to clarify on that audit component relating to regulatory compliance, 
you're saying I don't have to write special uh, golden configs that are going to be relevant for PCI compliance, let's say. And Gluer has got that baked in so that if I need to be compliant with these regulations, it's already there for me. Uh, we, we do have some out of the box standards baked into our platform um, and we're able to you know continue to create those for our customers as, as they as they have interest and in the, in the, they have demand for that inside of their network but um, absolutely you can do it both ways you can you can either customize it if it's not something that's out of the box uh, we can work with you to create it so that it's it's you know in inside of your environment and then we also have some straight out of the box uh, standards as well that come uh, with the platform cool um, so the next piece is the OS manager piece and OS manager allows for uh, customers to easily upgrade and downgrade code inside of their environment. And as you, you know, mentioned before, uh, you know, customers, you know, sometimes they, they, have a, they have a real challenge running and, and maintaining, uh, you know, standard versions of code. And it really, it, it, as you scale out and you go to thousands and tens of thousands of devices, it becomes more and more challenging to, to administer that. Um, Julie mentioned in one of the earlier sessions about, you know, one of our use cases for a customer was, was maintaining that version of uh, maintaining, uh, standard versions of code across their environment. And the Glueware platform makes that very easy to do. And when it becomes easier to do, it becomes easier to scale and you can achieve a better consistency across the network. And that consistency is important from a security perspective, as well as a performance perspective. Um, if you're running ver different versions of code all over the place, and you, know, you run into a performance issue, it, it can be hard to identify and isolate exactly what's going on. But when you standardize on things, it, it makes it a lot easier. I guess that's where the downgrade component might come in. Because I mean, usually we think of this as, as upgrades. You got to upgrade to the fix the whatever the, the, the older version was. So it's downgrading a thing that customers are dealing with a lot? It happens less than upgrading, but there's definitely some use cases for for up, uh, for downgrading. Um, you know, so sometimes again, maybe you run into a performance bug and you realize that there's no current fix for that vendor and it's causing outages inside of your environment. Well, if you have a thousand devices that are all running that, a lot of people are like, "Well, let's try to figure out a workaround because that's a lot of effort and a lot of lifting to get to a place where now we fixed it all." But with the Glueware platform, we can automate those downgrades at scale to get you to a stable version of code. Uh, another use case is some of our customers will have devices that are shipped to them and they're running a version of code that's newer than their corporate standard. And so Gluer will allow them to downgrade that and get that into the corporate standard version uh, very quickly and easily. Okay, so config drift and audit. We got an OS manager component here and uh, then there's config modeling, right? Yep, so config modeling uh, allows customers to take their configurations and turn them into network policy. And what I mean by that is you can take the different elements, let's say your AAA authentication or your SNMP configurations, and you can abstract, and Glueware, Glueware is able to abstract those elements into different features and functionality and let you visualize those as features instead of as, as code. And then with our data model that we've built, you know, Glueware has the capability of taking your intended policy understanding what the configurations are inside of your devices and whether or not they're meeting that policy. And then it knows the configurations required to put you into your intended state. And that's really important, right? If I'm mostly a Juniper expert, I don't have to know how to write it in Cisco IOS to make that policy come to life. Glueware just takes care of that for me. Yep, absolutely. That's one of the very cool features about Glueware and it allows uh, network engineers to, you know, essentially extend their expertise or, you know, expand their expertise into new platforms pretty easily because they know what they want to do and then the Glueware platform will do it for them. Now, another piece of this is as we move on to the next component is uh, is automating uh, the remediation, Tim. And this is this is where I get all all tingly. Talk about it. Yeah, so you know, Mike just went through you know the basic network RPA, but you know the what it allows you to do is is enable end-to-end -end process automation. So we went through all the different features and functionality that Glueware can do uh, just just before, and really we can automate all of those things into workflows that really match what the business requirements are. Um, so the other thing about network RPA is that it can be event-driven. So we can take in external API calls to kick off tasks, and we can also call out to APIs elsewhere to do things like, for example, if you have an ITSM of ServiceNow or Remedy, um, we, can, we can integrate workflows into that so the approvals can actually be done off box inside of those systems and match your normal uh, business workflow from a change control approval perspective. Um, we also have the ability from an API perspective to integrate downstream into things like Stackstorm and Ansible, 
which allow you to have you know extended functionality beyond what we have in our application suite to do almost anything you want to be able to do inside of your network or even inside of public cloud environments. Very cool. And I think you've got an application that you've you've written in the real world that uh, ties us all together. And we have a slide illustrating how that works, right? Yep, absolutely. So back in uh, April in uh, Onug Spring, um, we worked with them to create an automated response to a security event. So Onug created a framework called the Cloud Security Notification Framework, or CSNF. And what that was is a, is a basically a common messaging standard between all the public cloud providers, as well as all the different software providers that have solutions for the public cloud to allow a free exchange of information and allow that exchange, that information to be actioned upon either by, you know, from an analytical perspective or a remediation perspective. Um, the specific use case that we dem demonstrated at ONUG was we took an event-driven uh, API call from Sentinel. So Azure Sentinel is Microsoft's uh, cloud SIM and it does analytics up in the cloud. And in this particular instance, what, what we worked with them on was they basically identified that there was an attacker attacking the environment based on the analytics and it figured out what the IP address of that attacker was. When it uh, sent the API call to us to, to kick off the workflow task, it included the IP address of that attacker as well as the subnet inside of the cloud where it existed. Um, so Glueware as Engine was able to take in that API call. It was able to parse out the IP address um, as well as the subnet ACL and then use leveraging Stackstorm. It called back out to AWS to create an access list entry at the top of that subnet ACL, preventing any further communication from coming in from that attacker. Um, the next thing we did was we leveraged our Ansible integration to verify that that change was made. So we checked the subnet ACLs with Ansible and we did some additional ping testing to verify that that communication was being blocked at the network level. And then last, um, based on the fact that we saw that there was this ongoing attack going on, um, is we decided that maybe it would make sense to actually check the on-premise infrastructure as well. So we went ahead and kicked off a workflow that did a config drift of the network to see if any changes had been made and put those changes back into a remediated or intended state. Um, and then last, we, we did a config audit to just kind of check and make sure that everything looked good after that remediation and the network was, was still functioning as intended. Now, Tim, this, you've just illustrated w w the, where you really want to be when you're dealing with a security event. You are want to detect it automatically and be able to react to it automatically so that you're getting out in front of that thing as quickly as possible, right? Yep. I mean, so over the last few years, what we've seen is attackers have started automating attacks. And so they're not even sitting there at a lot of times with their hands on the keyboard. They're just letting programs run and they're, they're automating and trying to find vulnerabilities. And when they find them, they're just immediately trying to exploit them. And so in order to be able to defend against automated attacks, you have to have an automated response or you're just behind the ball. Or you're just sitting there doing forensics. Well, Tim Silverline, thanks very much for joining us on the uh, Packet Pushers live stream with Glueware. And with that, that brings us to the end of this live stream event. Now, we got a few questions in from you. Uh, we saw those come in. We just didn't have quite have enough time to get to them. We're going to try to get to those offline, either from us or from Glueware, to get a response to you. And uh, if you have any more questions that you didn't get answered, you can send them to, uh, to me and the Packet Pusher Slack channel if you like. I'm there. Or you can tweet at me. Or uh, uh, if you want to bring up that concluding slide there for us, uh, there's some contact information on there. You can hit up the Glueware team directly, and uh, they will be happy to answer all of your questions. A lot of smart folks at Glueware that have been developing this product and know it inside and out. Um, yeah, you had some questions about Stackstorm integration and uh, uh, how long it takes to onboard with various devices and so on and they can get you all of that information and uh, maybe get a proof of concept test started for you because that's really the way you want to prove out a platform like this bring it into your environment and see how it works for you all the videos from this event they're going to be posted to the packet pushers youtube channel in the next week or two we need a little bit of time to get them edited and get them posted and uh, that is packet pushers network on youtube the packet pushers network search for that channel and you'll find all those videos there as soon as we get them posted. Thanks again for attending and have a great day, everyone.